Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my official college football top 10 best bets for week number nine, where I go over some of my best bets for this upcoming week. And guys, we begin in a noon game on Saturday. It's the Big 12 Overs. They're back. TCU at West Virginia. I realize West Virginia let us down last week with a poor offensive performance, but they will rebound. They're due for a big home performance against TCU. And guys, Every one of TCU's games has been going over. This could be a 45-42 to 42 type game, in my opinion. I will take the over. TCU currently 7-point favorites. West Virginia, JT Daniels, they're going to rebound at home. And we see a noon shootout. There's been a trend with these noon Big 12 games being shootouts. We're hoping for sunny skies there in West Virginia and another high-scoring game. Number two, this game is, I believe, on Friday night. I have to apologize. I know I normally put uh, these games, the, the weekday games first, but I just had to add this one to East Carolina at BYU. We're taking the over 60 and a half. BYU's defense is terrible. They've allowed over 40 points in the, their last two games. I know East Carolina, they had a shocking performance against UCF, especially their defense shutting down UCF, but... Personally, I think that's a bit of an aberration. Now they have to go on the road. Their defense this year, for the most part, has been bad. We know BYU can score, but they have a bad defense. All of the factors pointing, weeknight game, everything's pointing to this game going over the 60 and a half. Three-point spread, it's going to be close. Both of these teams are going to be scoring back and forth. In my opinion, I will take the over. We're back on the Toledo train. We know Toledo, guys... Such a good MAC team. They lose last week to Buffalo after leading, you know, into the third quarter in that game. Now they get a horrible Eastern Michigan team. And Eastern Michigan, I believe, got blown out by like 29 points to Northern Illinois a few weeks ago. Toledo is on the road. They do have a miserable number, minus the 7.5. You would love to see that number come down to 6.5. Uh, and then possibly bet Toledo. But still, guys, I'm expecting this game to be a relative you know, relatively comfortable Toledo cover. They're a really good. I still think they're the best team in the MAC, even though Buffalo is undefeated and they just beat Toledo. Toledo was winning that game on the road. Toledo's offense has way more upside and they do have a good defense. I also like the over, I believe, 58 in this game, but I'll just take Toledo minus the 7.5 on the road at an Eastern Michigan team who's shown, you know, the ability to get blown out in several MAC games. Number four, Rutgers at Minnesota, the under 41 and a half. I just don't know who's going to score in this game. I'm not sure how points are going to be generated. To me, the over-under in this game, I would put it at like 37 or 36. This is a weird 2 o'clock start time or like 2.30, which is like a 1.30 local time in Minnesota. Nobody's going to be watching this game. Minnesota, maybe they get Tanner Morgan back, but still Rutgers has a good defense. They love playing lower scoring games. It's probably going to be cold in Minnesota this time of year. Maybe we get some light flurries. Um, again, it's just like I see the number at 40. I'm like, I got to take the under in this game. I think there's good value. I understand why they're not going to put the over under at 37 or 38 if Minnesota gets Tanner Morgan back, but um, and, and they might, but Still, guys, Rutgers is a team, they love ball control, they love uh, lower scoring defensive minded games in Minnesota with their current crop of receivers, they're not going to be throwing the ball anywhere, they're just going to run the ball a ton and they're going to run it into a Rutgers defense that has been pretty good this year, I'll take the under. Old Dominion plus the four at Georgia State, guys, Old Dominion is a good football team, I think Old Dominion wins this game outright. I would put this game as a pick em personally, and I think Vegas is really underrating Old Dominion. I think the FPI gives Old Dominion like a 47% chance to win, so it's basically a toss-up, and I saw good value in Old Dominion plus the four. They are on the road, but it's not like Georgia State has a crazy home environment. Also, I believe, you know, Georgia State... Um, not a very good team this year. So I'll take Old Dominion. They've proven more offensively. They've got more offensive upside to me, plus the four. Illinois at Nebraska, the under 51 and a half. Anytime an Illinois game involving, you know, if it's Illinois versus a team that's not really great on offense and the over-under is over 50, 
you have to take the under. Because Nebraska, I mean, they've scored Casey Thompson, whatever. They're okay. But Illinois very easily could shut Nebraska down. And, and Nebraska could score 10, maybe 13 points in this game. We certainly know Illinois' offense, they're not going to get to 40 points, you would think. So anytime you see an Illinois over under into the 50s, that's not including an elite offensive team, and Nebraska certainly is not an elite offensive team, I would say the value lies in the under in any Illinois game where that scenario you know, plays out, and we've got that here. Illinois actually listed as 7.5-point favorites in that this game. I personally hate betting the spread when it comes to Illinois. Just because they've got such a one-dimensional offense, it feels like they're never going to cover spreads, but they keep covering them. So I respect Illinois. That's why I'm not going to be telling people to bet on Nebraska plus the seven. I'll just take the under in that game. Number seven, UCF plus the one versus Cincinnati. Guys, UCF last week, in my opinion, it was a total aberration. They will bounce back. They will win this game at home. Cincinnati, Ben Bryant, the quarterback, dealing with a little bit of an injury. I think he's healthy, but still, guys, UCF is at home. Their offense, after scoring just 13 points last week, is due for a total explosion. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Cincinnati is due for a loss. I have a lot of respect for Luke Fickle. You know, the SMU game, SMU comes back. They almost send that game to overtime. UCF at home. They have two losses. Cincinnati has one. This is a parody game. Give me UCF. Believe in UCF football. They win this game. It's going to be close. It's going to be one we got to sweat. But UCF will pull it out. They will win this game straight up. Number eight, Northwestern at Iowa. The under 35 and a half. So guys, there were people saying that this game opened at 31. The over-under opened at like 31 and a half. They were saying it's the lowest over-under in college football history. I never saw it at 31 and a half. Maybe it did and it immediately got bet up. But I, I would kind of fi find a little weird. It would get bet up to 35 that quickly. But I think there's great value in, in pretty much any Iowa under uh, Nebraska or excuse me Northwestern. They can't score either. They try and play defense. It's going to be lower scoring. We could be looking at a 13 to nine type game, 20 to seven, something like that. Even a 27 to seven game where Iowa somehow would score 27 points. The under hits. So I think you're looking at good value if you can find the under 35 and a half. I would imagine this would probably come back down to like 34 if I had to guess just because Iowa's situation with the horrible offense, the really good defense, they're at home against a team that can't score but kind of has an okay defense and we know, you know, it's just a situation where Iowa so bad at at offense and Northwestern also very bad at offense, two decent defenses. There's to me there's still good value in the under. North Texas at Western Kentucky, the over 70 and a half. Guys, both of these teams are going to get into at least the 30s. North Texas will bounce back after their lower scoring game. Um, and I think Western Kentucky is minus 10 and a half. I, I just think this game's got maybe 54 to 40 type vibes. You know, it's Halloween Eve. There's going to be a lot of points on the board. I know 70 and a half is a big number, but I will still take the over. Missouri at South Carolina, the over 47. Yes, guys. Sometimes I get weird vibes on SEC games. And this is one where it's a four o'clock mid-afternoon start. And I'm seeing kind of a sneaky shootout. South Carolina really hasn't had an offensive explosion recently. Missouri just scored 17 points. I think both of these teams are due for good offensive performances in South Carolina. Sunny weather. You're going to get the shadows, the 4 o'clock shadows. It's going to be nighttime. And I will think there's good value. I'm just thinking about something like maybe a 34-24 to 24 type game. You've got the over easily hitting in a situation like that. Also, I think there's decent value on South Carolina minus 5. But I don't trust them enough to really recommend that. Moving on to number 11, we've got Kentucky at Tennessee. Guys, I'll take the under 63 and a half. And you're going to hear a lot of people... Uh, saying to take the under in this game because it is good value. I, I would imagine Vegas put that number at 63 because of Tennessee's offense, and I understand why. I I totally get Tennessee has an elite has an elite offense, but Kentucky's coming off a bye. They've got a solid defense. They're gonna ball control this game. Will Levis. They're gonna run it a lot with Rodriguez. I think they do a good job keeping this lower scoring 63 and a half. 
with a team like Kentucky with their defense, with their ball control, it's a big number. And Tennessee, they've had such a stressful pass, you know, well, not this past week they faced UT Martin, but you take a look at their schedule, maybe they look ahead a little bit to that road game next week at Georgia, and they play kind of a lower scoring close game. I've got Tennessee winning this game 27-21. to The under would very easily hit in that scenario. So I understand why it's such a big number, but I do think, based on all of the factors, the fact the fact that Tennessee faces Georgia on the road next week, there's good value. This Kentucky team, this defense, the ability to ball control, good value in the under 63 and a half. Number 12, USC minus the 15 at Arizona. So guys, the over-under on this game is outrageous and everyone is going to say to take the under. I don't trust it 100%. I would definitely say there's value. I think the over-under is like 74 or 73. Of course, then people take the under and the final score is like 52 to 37. So I'll just take USC minus 15. Arizona has a horrific defense. USC, Caleb Williams, they're coming off a bye. I think they get into the 50s. If they get into the 50s, are we really expecting Arizona to get into the 40s? Uh, you know, maybe it gets to be something like 52 to 37, but I would be shocked if Arizona, even though they do have a decent offense, I would be shocked if Arizona got to 37. So I like USC because there's going to be tons of points in this game to have a good chance to, you know, cover that 15 point spread. Number 13, UAB minus the five at FAU. FAU cannot score. UAB is back. UAB's offense is so much better than FAU's offense. I know they're on the road. They will cover this five-point spread. Number 14, Ole Miss at a and I'm taking the under 55 and a half. So I would imagine, you know, the reason this number is so high for an A&M game is due to Ole Miss's offense. But a and at home and you've got an over-under at 55 and a half, there has to be decent value in the under in that scenario. And I still don't fully trust Ole Miss and their red red zone offense in particular. It seems like they have a lot of drives that bog down in the red zone. Again, a and going to have the crowd on their side. They're going to want to ball control this game. Clearly, Ole Miss has the more explosive offense, but they're on the road in a hostile environment, and you're getting an A&M team. Their goal is to play low-scoring close games. They're going to be at home, and the spread is 2.5. They're underdogs. Give me the under. 55 and a half in that matchup. Baylor football, guys. Trust Baylor football. Plus the two and a half. I think Baylor wins this game outright at Texas Tech. I know Texas Tech just had a major statement win this past weekend. Uh, their defense played great, but I will take Baylor. And I love, also love the over. I believe the over-under in this game is 61. I love the over. And I love Baylor to win this game outright. Middle Tennessee State, I have them winning Outright at UTEP, I think it's a correction game. Middle Tennessee states, they've lost four in a row. They are better than UTEP. They should be favorites over UTEP. Guys, remember, I had UTEP winning last week as three-point home underdogs straight up against, I think, FAU, and they did. Now I'm going the opposite way. I'm totally playing. I'm totally destroying this conference. Now I'm saying I'll take the value in Middle Tennessee State plus the two at UTEP because Middle Tennessee State is a better team, and they're going to win this game outright. And then finally, we've got the last one, San Diego State at Fresno State, kind of the low-hanging fruit here. I'll take the under 40. So basically every week with these 1030 games, one of the games seems to always just go way under. Like the final score is like 17 to 13. I'm saying San Diego State, who has a horrible offense. Fresno State, with their quarterback injury, has a horrible offense. I know 40 isn't a big number, but this game has 17 to 13, 17 to 14 written all over it. In my opinion, I will take the under. So guys, those are my top 10 best bets for college football week number nine. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course... The Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.